What's up everybody, this is Darkson. I'm gonna be back in StarCraft 2 Heart of the Swarm. I'm gonna be casting a game today. It's been a while. It's, it has definitely been a while. I'm sorry for that guys. I've just been really, really busy. Meaning that I don't get as much time to spend on uh, on things that I really do enjoy, such as StarCraft and, uh, and casting games for all of you guys to watch. It's also pretty fun for me to do this, so um... So remember that, guys. Remember, remember that I'm having a good time as well. Uh, right away, we're uh, we're going to be casting another game by Nave. I have cast one of his games before, as some of you may remember. Actually, one of my most recent games was by Nave. Today's game is going to be between Nave in the top right-hand corner and the bottom left-hand corner is going to be Mickey Sniff. Um, I'm not sure if that's if that's a dirty word. I'm actually not sure at all because it. It's, it sounds dodgy. I'm just going to go ahead and say that. Um, but he's going to be going ahead and dropping his pylon down here at the bottom so that he can have that scouting uh, ability. And uh, and Nave is going to be doing his thing and sending out his overlords into, into position so he can check for the expansions and uh, and check again to see if there are going to be any attacks down here. That's, uh, that's what you do when you play against a... I think this is a Master League player. Both of these players are in Master League now. What, have, what did I tell you guys? Nave is definitely a player to be looking out for, and uh, and Mickey Sniff I believe is in top eight. After I checked him up on, uh, hmm, what did I? Well, okay, I checked him out on StarCraft Two profile. Um, I don't know how how modern and updated those things are, but um, this game is about a week old, so I don't think it's going to be too out of date. Anyway, yeah, oh, that's so cool. It's gone now. Hey, that actually does that cycle through a lot of models? I thought it was always just the Zergling. But, um, but that's pretty interesting now, that's a... Man, that is new. Oh, what is that? Guys, I'm seeing things that I've never seen before. This is StarCraft 2, ladies and gentlemen, Heart of the Swarm. Where there are 25 new maps, I believe, is the uh, is the total count. And uh, and this game is getting underway. We're going for an early expansion on both players. Uh, neither of them have, have dropped any tech so far. I believe that there is a spawning pool out, which is, could spell a little bit of danger for Mickey Sniff. Especially because he doesn't have any combat units out if um, if Nave decides to uh, to be really aggressive and make some Zerglings. It's going to, going to spell a whole lot of disaster. We do have a forge coming up, meaning that, uh, that Mickey Sniff is going to be able to defend with cannons. And... Uh, and those are as good as any other units, guys. Just hang on a minute. I uh, I get the feeling this is going to be a pretty long game because um, because of this early stuff. What was that? I think that was a pylon. Okay, excellent. Good work by uh, good work by Nave for seeing that. While well, I could not. <laughs> um, fortunately, he's a better player than I'm a, than I am a, uh, a caster. So we do have the cannon going down and the gateway, which is going to be forming some sort of blocking area over here, which is really good. Because uh, because this cannon is going to be defending against any sort of zerglings, and we do have no zerglings on the way so far. So it's a good a good play by Nave to uh, to be careful with those things, especially because he does have this overlord here, so he can see exactly what's going on, and he does know that this photo cannon, photon photo cannon, the cannon photos, uh, is going to be on, um, and it might be able to move away his uh, his overlord, and he does manage to move it away in time, guys. This is this is what I said. This is this is the sort of like level of player that uh, that we're watching at the moment, and that's just going to be pure amazing. These uh, these zerglings are going to be moving out. I actually wonder where exactly they're going, but I think they're just going to be scouting around, trying to see if they can find any um, any proxies. No, it actually looks like he's going to be straight running straight into. Where is he going? Where is he going, guys? Is he going? Is he going here? He is going there. Where is he going now? Hmm. Just grab a sip of my water, because as I said, I believe this game is going to be quite a long game. If we look at the third expansion going down already at the five minute mark, that's incredible. Really good timing from him. Um, both of these players are mackering up quite hard. They're, uh, neither of them are dropping much tech, but they are gathering up the, uh, the resources and making enough bases so that they can play some serious late game action. And I think that's going to be... Um, this is going to be an action-packed game, folks. An action-packed game, but I don't think that's going to be happening until any anywhere around the 12-minute mark, I believe. Bit of lag there. Sorry about that, guys. I should actually be dropping the uh, I should actually be dropping the the graphic settings a little bit, and then we do have the uh, the little animation that comes from the larval injects, which is always great to see. I love the animations in this game. This is why I like this game is great. It not only looks good, but it plays really good as well. And this uh, probe is going to be moving out. I wonder where he's going. He might just be going down to scout this area over here. 
to see if there is an expansion and there we go he sees exactly what he wants to see and this is uh this is exactly what he doesn't want to see actually he he just wanted to know that this is here but he does know at this point that he is one expansion behind the zerg which is usually quite typical those are the zerglings and the probe just missing one another because uh, he's going to be going down to this area and what's he going to do with this i think he might drop a, a pylon and uh, and maybe proxy some units but uh, these zerglings are going to be moving out to check for any additional expansions and this is their job folks there uh, there's a lot of scouting intel to go around in this game we do have a little bit of movement from those zerglings i think they are going to be covering this area to check as well and they might just run into this probe this probe unfortunately is going to be caught out by these uh by these slow zerglings and they are coming around are they going to swing around are they going to attack they are on the attack command um i should say and they do manage to get this around into the corner wow that <laughs> that poor little probe was just getting pile driven into the wall by uh by these four gangster gangster zerglings these these mean zerglings uh just had their their awful ways with him <laughs> there you go folks this is classy darkson with uh, with rape jokes in starcraft 2 casting uh we do have the warp gate research finishing and they are finally he is finally getting the warp gates up unfortunately he doesn't have any forward attack position so so he is in the uh he's in the defensive position at this point in the game where he needs to build up the units inside his base um, in order to defend against the attacks that might be coming from Nave at any moment now. Look at the units tab, we'll see exactly what Nave has built up at this point. And that's just six Zerglings and a lot of drones. That is so many drones, guys. I think the income is going to be ridiculous at this point. You can see Nave is ahead by nearly 500 resources per second. Is that per second or per minute? I'm actually not sure. I think it's per minute. Obviously, per second would just show an incredible amount there. Imagine trying to spend that much. I think it's like Bill Gates, basically. His lifestyle is like... It It takes him... It costs him more money to pick up a $100 bill if he's dropped it um, than it were if he just stood up and left it on the ground. So, like, if he drops a $100 bill, it, that doesn't matter. In the same way uh, with between uh, Nave and Mickey Snap at this point, especially Nave because of that incredible income. Let's go back to the production tab. If, uh, if Nave drops a thousand minerals... Um, he shouldn't even pick it up again because he's going to lose them immediately. And we do have a, a little bit of attack, uh, an attack push coming from Mickey Sniff here. This is a lot of uh, a lot of ticklers. Usually, I, I don't think of these as intimidating, but four of them is quite a r relatively large amount of damage. It's um, seven times four. That's that's just some kind of math that I'm unable to calculate at this point. Sorry, guys. Uh, you can you can you can do that in, in the comment section below if you really feel like it. Um, but this army is going to be going to be getting a little bit larger now. We do have so many ticklers. These ticklers are completely dangerous right now. But uh, the production is showing that there are more roaches, and roaches do quite a bit of damage to these sentries. So hopefully, the um, the void rays and the and the zealots are going to be enough to take out uh, to take out that sort of army. We do have. Uh, we do have Nave moving his army into the correct position at the moment. I think he was able to see something with these with these overlords, and he was able to detect that the push might be coming this way. And he he has moved his army back a little bit just to make sure that the spine crawlers are hitting as well. And uh, wow, this is incredible amount of damage from Mickey Smith. This is a really good push, actually. He might be able to to keep Nave out of his base. And this is so many of these roaches. These roaches are so many at this point. I'm not sure that Mickey Smith is going to be able to hold them off. Unfortunately, he was he only had that many uh, feet force fields to keep them away and that is just completely overwhelming at this point the void rays are just doing a incredible amount of damage because they are completely unmitigated there is a spine crawler or sport crawler excuse me that is going to be sinking down into the ground and it is going to get a couple of hits off on this void ray but it doesn't manage to kill the void ray completely and here we go we have a serious situation now it looks like nave is going to be moving out of his army while mickey sniff is attacking these void rays attacking that base with those void rays and it looks like this uh, expansion is going to go down unfortunately for uh, for Nave he does lose quite a bit of income over there but uh, but at the same time Nave is moving out with all of these roaches and here comes the trouble guys the noise is about to hit um, because unfortunately I don't think Mickey Sniff is completely ready for this he does drop quite a bit of force fields and those force fields do force the uh, force the Na uh, force force Nave's roaches back excuse me um, and they do manage to push him all the way back. Unfortunately, he couldn't do the damage that he needed to do. He didn't return the damage that was originally caused by uh, by Mickey Sniff, and he does 
does lose this expansion. That's quite a shame for him. But at the same time, Mickey Sniff does look like he uh, he has quite a decent amount of saturation on both of his bases, which means that he might be looking to expand anytime soon as long as he can get his units moving out. And we do have the expansion, uh, the, the hologram for the expansion that's dropped down, the mothership core moving around as well. And there we go, we dropped the, uh, the Nexus, and the Nexus is out. I wonder... Um, it looks like uh, it looks like Nate is just waiting for those resources to come in so that he can have his expansion, and he does have it down. And he does have these uh, these drones that are doing the long distance mining between this base and this base. This is quite a long distance to actually be uh, be doing some long distance mining, but that's why they call it that, guys. Long distance. Uh, this army is starting to look quite menacing for Nate. On the other end, we have a relatively small army for uh, for Mickey Snip, but he does have quite a lot of gates. And, uh, and the Stargate up, so he is able to build an army quite quite a lot quicker, I feel, than, uh, than Nave can. But this army is going to be moving out, and it is enormous. This is completely ridiculously menacing, and it does look like he's going to be sh opening up this uh, the shortcut over here. The shortcut is really... Once you can have that up, especially as, uh, as Zerg, you can do quite a bit of damage. Because you're able to move your forces out so much faster. Um, especially because Zerg units are... Uh, are very ground based and um, well the, most of their heavy damage units are, are, are fairly ground based so you wouldn't you want to be moving out your units as fast as you can we do have even more of these hydrolysts going out and it does look like he has seen this expansion and he is going to be trying to take this out there's so many cannons though this is a ridiculous amount of cannons and some void rays it looks like he's going to be have, he is going to be forced out of that uh, out of that entrance and he could could he go around I'm not sure what Mickey Sniff, uh, if Mickey Sniff knows exactly what's going to be happening right now, but it looks like Nave is just going to be swinging around to this area. He's going to be trying to open up this ramp because uh, because Zerg really likes the open spaces and having such a tight little ramp is not good for them, especially because all the units will only be able to move through that little tight area. But there we go. We have an excellent concave on those rocks managing to form. And here we go. It looks like we are, go we are going to be taking out the forge as soon as we can. Forge is going down for Nave or for for Mickey Snip, Luckily for uh, for Nave, he doesn't he does get the kill eventually, and he's moving in with these uh, with these overseers. Unfortunately, misminding them a little bit might mean that he's losing them. And he gets a ridiculous surround. Mickey Snip getting a surround on these units. Will he be able to take out these uh, these hydrolysts before they do too much damage to the void rays? And it looks like he might be able to. These uh these void rays are just going to be taking out whatever is left of this army, and it looks like they might be able to clean up this entire army. Unfortunately, that was quite a big loss for Mickey Sniff as well. He does have the Colossus up, but the Colossus is exactly what he needs at this point to counter this heavy ground army. Um, and uh, and this base seems to be safe from this area, but I'm not so sure about this little tight enclosure that he had before. Right now, if he sends out uh, a decent amount of units again, he can just swing them around into this area over here completely take out this ramp over here that is not to say that he will not be uh, immune to surrounds as he was now he was caught by quite a surprise because the army came from this area and the bottom and it completely took out Nave's army but Nave is sitting on his fourth base already that is half th halfway through saturation and the army is moving out again I don't know if Mickey Snip is ready for this push uh, he was quite ready for the last one but uh, but his his uh, his mixture of flying and ground units seems to be uh, seems to be falling, and will be taking quite a bit of damage from these two two hydrolisks. We do have the one. Is that? Oh gosh, these guys die so quickly. I can't even see the upgrades. This is tr the triple one upgrades on those uh, on those zealots, meaning uh, meaning that they are that they can do quite a bit of damage to these uh, to these hydrolisks. Unfortunately, they have to move out, and it seems like Mickey Sniff is going to be taking the middle ground. Um, Mickey Sniff is making a decent push at this point. I think that he might be ready to, f to form a, an additional expansion right now. Putting down this many cannons, though, I have to say, is a risky move because you're never sure, like, how much, um, you know, how much are you, how much are you spending on keeping that base safe, versus uh, versus how much you'll be getting out of it. So at this point, it does seem like it was a good idea to put down those cannons because he has been able to mine from that base quite efficiently, and he loses this entire army so quickly because he split them over these rocks. And, uh, and loses those Colossus. What a shame. I think that might have been a little bit of Miss Micro, which eventually led to his demise at this point. And he will lose another Colossus if these if these Hydralists are used correctly. And they are, and they do ma manage to take them out. Unfortunately, there isn't much left of this force. So this attack down at the bottom here is going to be super effective. Super effective, guys. I love my Pokemon. And this army does move in to, to intercept these, uh, these Zealots. And they do take them out. I love that death animation, guys. I cannot have too much of it. Um, we do have some units spawning in over here that are going to be hydrolisks. 
So these hydrolysts may be able to clean out that zealot and these uh, and these voiders. Unfortunately, I don't think. Oh no! This this might just be the push that uh, that Mickey Sniff needed to push uh, to push Nave back, and it looks like he is going to be able to do it. It looks like it looks like he is unstoppable at this point. There are not enough hydrolysts to take out these void rays, unfortunately for uh, for Nave. And it, actually, it is because if he does miss micro and forces down that uh, that hatchery. Uh, he is going to lose these units, but he does force down the hatchery, which is a good thing. But at the same time, there's another hatchery over here. So we are just, we cannot stop the Zerg from expanding, guys. This is too much. But at the same time, Mickey Sniff has his as well. Guys, this game is getting ridiculous. At this point, the expansions are going to be covering half of the, uh, well, three quarters of the map already. Because there are only four bases, four bases left on the map. So that's 50% of the map? No, that's, that's 30, th guys. 66% of the map. I'm so sorry. I, I should not even attempt to do math. Like, if, if anyone, like, catches me, like, mid-math, just, just, like, yell stop or something. That might help. Um, uh, this expansion is going to be going down again, which means that we are going to be having five expansions for the Zerg, which means that we are going to be forcing the late game. It is going to become that time of the day, folks. And it looks like... Uh, it looks like our Protoss player has already reached his late game. If you look at the units, I'm actually curious to see exactly how many. We have 83... Excuse me. We have 83 probes on the field and 74 drones. That is so many. That is so much mining. That is so much income. If we look at the income tab, it's actually not much of a difference. What? That is 2,000. That's an enormous difference, Neil. Stop saying things that are dumb. <laughs> we do have this army formulating and we do have some swarm hosts. Swarm hosts are probably what... Uh, what uh, I, I just I hate these things seeing them in games but I love seeing them from players that I love watching because it means that uh, that it's just going to be free damage out on units and this is exactly what we want to see we want to see a sort of sandwich time between uh, between Nave and Mickey Sniff and unfortunately these uh, fortunately for uh, for Mickey Sniff these force fields are able to hold that that army back but it, I don't know how much that actually did because these free units just keep doing the damage so it, like while he has the sandwich form it looks like he's going to be doing the incredible amount of damage that he wants to do. And if he forces him away, if he manages to pull him away, that means that these swarm hosts are going to be getting free hits out on this Nexus. And that might be exactly what Nave was thinking when he was moving his units out here. You might be able to take out this expansion and prevent it completely while these uh, these locusts are going in and they're going to be taking out this mineral line. This is so much action, folks. I cannot handle this. I cannot be ready for this. Unfortunately, he loses his entire army over here for Nave, but he does manage to take out this expansion. Will he be able to? Will he be able to do that with these? Uh, with these locusts that are left, unfortunately, this army is uh, is going to be quite aggressive, and they might be able to hold them off just for long enough. These uh, these probes really can get back to mine him, but we, what we really need is some scouting over here. We need some observers uh, to to scout this army over here so that we are able to have vision on them. What are we going to do, guys? How are we going to spot them? Unfortunately, uh, Nave is going to have going to have to move out over there. And Mickey Sniff does force the attack. He does force him back. That is good, excellent work from him. He does unfortunately lose this expansion, but he does have a whole bunch of chainlings, changelings over here for Nave. So he is able to spot that whatever is going on over there, which is unfortunately for uh, for Mickey Sniff. I keep saying unfortunately, guys. There's there is so much misfortune happening in the, in this game so far. Um, these <laughs> they do get scouted and they do get taken out eventually. That is great work. Um, I just I just love seeing changelings there. It just it feels like an insult to me. I don't know I don't know how to handle when I see them. I just feel like, dude, do you really think? Do you really think that you've tricked me? I feel as if to say, um, those locusts do get a decent amount of hits on this colossus. And does he have? He does have some observers up in the back of his army. And it might look. It looks like Nave is going to be losing these swarm hosts. Unfortunately, so much so much misfortune again. Sorry guys, I keep saying it. Uh, he does lose a lot of those units, and they are so expensive to lose. I'm actually curious to see what the units lost tab says, and that is so much! Oh my god, both of these units are almost on equal footing, especially because they have the same amount of bases. I don't know what that spells for Nave, because usually your uh, your Protoss players don't want to be... You don't want your Protoss player being on the same amount of, uh, of bases as you are. But here we go, the Mutalists are moving into the main base. What are they going to do? It looks like they are going to, going to take out these... Uh, uh, well, I guess there's no point in taking out this Nexus, but he is going to take out the... Uh, is that the Cybercore? Yes, that is the Cybercore, and the, the Zerglings are taking a run by into this base, and they're going to take out this... Uh, I don't know exactly what they're going to be attacking here. I've actually never seen this before, and I don't know what to attack myself when I get into this part of the late game. 
because uh, because taking out Nexus is a, are a strange thing. We do have some action up in the middle of the base, in the, in the middle of the map here as well. We it looks like we are going to have attacks up in the middle part, uh, up in the most f up into the furthest most west base of Nave. Words, things coming out of my mouth. Um, there we go. The, we do have the mutilists moving in here, and uh, it looks like the losses, unfortunately, not being able to attack them, are going to fall to these uh, to these mutilists. And he doesn't manage to clean that up so well. Look at that hatchery with 54 health, and not even a queen to do it. A uh, uh, there's something that the queens do. I have to. Is it a trans tra 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 transfusion? Transfusion. I really should. Uh, I really should play more StarCraft, guys. But I've been so busy, as you know. Unfortunately, this one does not have the rally point and he does manage to lose a couple of those uh, those probes and he, d he does lose this entire expansion because this army over here is going to be chilling out that is not an easy base to defend i must say but it looks like this is this is an interesting expansion to grab um nave's army at this point is looking so deadly a completely powerful flying army it's so massive unfortunately he doesn't have the upgrades that he needs but, uh, but he takes so many hits from these Archons, these Archons doing their splash damage, and they do quite a bit of damage, and if he was staying around, he might have lost a little more. But uh, I think that was a much more favorable, favorable engagement for Nave. I think he just wanted to keep his units alive as much as he can, and he does have so many Mutalists up. I think it's 39 in the same control group. That is an enormous, disgusting amount of... Uh, ooh, I'm feeling a sneeze coming on. You guys ever get that feeling, but the sneeze is never going to come? Oh man, that's how I feel at this point. This game is incredible. We're at, thir we're at the 30 minute mark already. Relatively uncommon for games that I cast. We do have a full on supply cap by Nave, so we are at 200 at this point. Um, he is going to lose a couple of units. I don't know what those are from. How, is, how are they How are they dying? I, I don't know how that works. I think he was actually just building buildings. Excuse me, guys. Uh, it looks like he's building a couple of spine crawlers, so that's how he was losing the supply. And he is taking out so much of the tech here, unfortunately, for uh, for Mickey Sniff. I don't know how he's going to how he's going to attack back on this because he is unable to build any more units. I think he has lost most of his gateways at, the, at this point. I think he's got the two gate, four gateways up. That's all he has at this point to build units. He doesn't have anything else, so he's going to move out with this army. That's all he really can do. He's at 100 supply, 124 supply. But uh, but ridiculously supply cap at this point, and he does lose all of those uh, all of those warp gates. I think he only has the two left. Is he able to snipe these last two? I don't think he'll be able to, especially with those cannons. And he's going to fly right over them. This guy is so aggressive. Nave is ridiculously overpowered at this point because he just has the exact army that he needs to. It looks like he might be able to, he might be taking a couple of hits from those uh, from those phoenix, but he does manage to drop those phoenixes super fast. He is starving uh, Mickey Sniff at this point, and Mickey Sniff is unable to because he's unable to build more units, and he isn't able to uh, to mine any more minerals. That means that he's eventually going to run out. And even though you know, looking at 5,000 minerals at a time, 4,000 minerals, and you say you're going to be starving someone, that's a very great possibility at this point because this base is nearly mined out. This base is completely mined out, and this one as well. So when you're looking at the 30 minute mark, you really want to have more bases. At this point, he only has the one secure mining base, really. Um, it looks like he might need to go, might need to start looking at the next one. And this, these uh, these swarm host locust attacks are just going to be ridiculous at this point. And he's going to continually starve his army, meaning that these uh, every hit that these swarm hosts get off is going to be great for him, because it's slowly going to whittle down this army. It's so slowly going to chip it down. Because, uh, oh gosh, um, guys, 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 there's some, I'm, I'm just going to pause this quickly for a minute because there's some vacu vacuuming going on in my house. I honestly don't know what to do when, uh, when the vacuuming starts because I never have to deal with this. Usually I only cast games at night when uh, when I'm being r incredibly obnoxious and uh, and I'm keeping people awake with my incredible noises. But this incredible attack by Nave means that he's going to have zero production. There we go, ladies and gentlemen. This is how zero production looks. Actually, this isn't zero production because he's still, still able to build from this robotics facility and the warp gate. But we do have this attack from... Uh, from Nave, from Nave coming in with these swarm hosts, and this is a seriously good strategy. Like, it's not very often that I see strategy in this game, and uh, and this is just this is exactly the sort of the sort of thing that I want to see. And all these observers are going to scout these uh, these swarm hosts, and is he going to lose them because this army is pushing right in there, and it looks like he might have to pull them back, and he is going to pull them back into the ultralisks, and the ultralisks are incredible. Look at that! Look at how mean they look with that incredible level 30 skin. 
They look so dangerous. <laughs> I believe that this is going to be it, ladies and gentlemen. It looks like Nave does manage to uh, completely melt away this army with the Mutilus still flying around. We do have the GG from Mickey Sniff and the GG from Nave. Um, that was an amazing game, guys. That was incredible. This is <laughs> this is a really fun game for me to, to for me to have watched. And I'm certain that both players had a lot of fun playing it. Um, I do want to make an announcement quick before I end the video, guys. I want to have... I really enjoy casting these games, and I would love to make an investment into the casting um, and get myself a very decent microphone with some decent headphones as well. Studio quality, of course. Um, but I need some support from you guys to let me know that, uh, that, you, guys, that you guys are doing this, are enjoying me doing this. <clears throat> And, uh, and I'm not just doing it for myself because I am doing this for myself. I'm having quite a bit of, quite a bit of fun with it. Um, I need to get 35 views on this video before I invest some of my YouTube money into a decent microphone so that I can bring you guys some awesome quality. Um, so if every one of you can at least uh, share this video with one of your friends, that would be amazing. Um, but yeah, anyway, thanks for watching, guys, and uh, bye.